So we were uh, at a, an expo, uh, a show, sometime in the year 2019. And this was happening in India, of course. And we looked at one of the foreign sniper rifles. Uh, and as usual, my team decided to get a little, uh, you know, curious. So we took out the bolt and we were trying to take off the bolt from the receiver. And uh, the Jawan on the other side said, Sab, 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 kuch mat karo, kuch mat karo. So my guy said, Kya ho gaya, bas? So, sir, kuch karo ge na, isko wapas Videsh bhejna padega. Or agar uh, isko wapas bhejna padega, maha pe humare baut paise lag jayenge. That was one instance where my team said, enough is enough. We've got to find a way in which our guys at field, at field, or for that matter, base repair stations can take the sniper rifle, do minor modifications, minor maintenance, without actually having to send this all the way back to any place, not even to Bangalore, where we have a setup. In our show today, we have CEO of Triple S Defense, a promising private player in Indian defense manufacturing with advanced small arms and ammunition. Triple S Defense has been doing extensive research in collaboration with the Indian Defense Forces. In this video, Mr. Vivek Krishnan will tell us about their products, compare it with foreign weapons and will acquaint us with their challenges. We asked Mr. Vivek Krishnan, their journey from being spring manufacturers to small arms and ammunition manufacturers. So our journey starts off sometime in the year 2016. Um, until 2016, um, the parent company, which is Stump Shuli and Sumapa Springs, was a dedicated manufacturer of springs for the automotive sector primarily. Major reasons why we actually got my different sector. One was the fact that there was certain liberalization of the policy as far as small arms manufacturing is concerned. B was that the company, the parent company that has also had a mindset which determined that it makes sense to diversify and try and work um, in an area like defense, preferably as an OEM. It, it was literally a startup that was created inside a fairly well-established and scaled up business, so to speak. Some of the most dicey components when it comes to small arms are the springs. Mm -hmm. uh, springs, when they fail, you have a miserable failure mm -hmm. on small arms. Uh, and so the parent company's background in industrial process in the uh, manufacturing of springs, the ability to scale up and the knowledge that comes in with almost 60 years worth of manufacturing was the reason why we decided to pour into venture, which utilize the understanding of metallurgy, utilize the understanding of industrial level manufacturing. Uh, no foreign partner actually wants to kind of give you a transfer of technology until they actually start seeing signs of the goodies. At that point in time, we as an organization decided that this wasn't going to be our forte. I mean, it, it was definitely not something that was worth waiting on. And so we formed a team, invested substantially in R&D at that point in time in the year 2016-2017. And started working on a few projects. So at that point in time, me and my chief technology officer, we started doing the rounds of some of these units, trying to ask them as to what it is that they would really want us to work on. We got some nice feedback. They gave us some ideas about what we could kind of develop as upgrades in the beginning. Uh, spares in some instances. There were some ancient weapons which they loved. For instance, the VZ-58, the Beretta, uh, which was really, really old. And they said, boss, I'm just don't have any more spare parts for some of these things. Can you help us out with spare parts? We help them out with the spare parts. All of this was pro bono, almost literally. And then we kind of got working on to upgrades of systems. And then it, it was something that, that, that kind of came to us that the knowledge that we've developed at that point in time was at least enough for us to mount a full blown R&D into actual weapon systems. And so at that point in time is when we decided to focus on the sniper. Given a choice, would you aim for an F1 car or would you aim for an ambassador, right? Given a choice, I would definitely aim for an F1 car. Yeah. Whether that results in a bad F1 car, I don't know, but we have to definitely aim for the F1 car. And which is why we decided to focus on the uh, sniper. Uh, it, it, took a, it took us almost about nine months worth of working on that one to get a lot of things right. In fact, 
as I speak today, we're still working on certain finer points of the close port um, action rifle, both on the 7.62.51 is also on the 0.33 at Lapua, but it's kind of coming closer to where I believe many foreign uh, players actually are. In the next four months, we should be having something interesting out. Uh, number one is at our small arms facility with an integral proof testing unit will be operational from Bangalore. We will definitely be able to complete certain trials on, on our snipers, both the 7.62.51 is also the 0.338. We've been working on a CQB carbine. Of course, yes, that's part and parcel of what the Indian Army wants to kind of look at as an acquisition in the year 2021-22. We've been refining the P72, um, the short stroke piston variant of the 7.62 by 39 rifle that we launched during the FEXPO. Um, and <clears throat> There is a submachine gun that has been in the works. Uh, it's more of a law enforcement kind of a uh, you know a project of sorts at this point in time. But we hope that at least, if not by June, by November, December of this year, we should be able to complete the development of that one. 2021 should be an important year for us in many respects. It is also going to be an important year because we intend to launch the ammunition business in the course of this year. Uh, oh, ammunition yeah. very, very close Samandra to us. Pradesh. Yeah. And ammunition is equally important for us because as time goes on, we realize that some of the best companies in this world, especially in the small arms space, work very closely with the ammunition guys to make sure that what they actually provide to the law enforcement or the military in the form of weapon systems is optimized for a certain brand of ammunition or a certain variety of ammunition. That gives them the ability to not only sell the weapon, but also sell the ammunition alongside. After the brief product introduction, we asked Mr. Krishnan, as to what was the motivation behind creating India's first sniper rifles, which were developed indigenously? On, on the sniper program, we we, uh, we right now have been working on two different variants. One is a 7.62 by 51, and the other one is the 0.338 Lapua Magnum. We started working on the 7.6251 just because of the fact that it was an easier program. The 338 on the other side was a brute of a weapon. Uh, the round uh, the Lapua Magnum round it was a legendary round um, throws out phenomenal energy, is very, very flat uh, 550 megapascals worth of energy released at that point in time, the trigger is pulled um, and so the metallurgy of the 0.338 Lapua Magnum is extremely complex but the 7.6251 is a little forgiving at least from the development uh, side of things so it was a 7.6251 which we started and that was the one that got trialed with the National Security Guard as well. Of all the things that we started um, putting in time on into, the action was what really took us a lot more time. We started with a very simple Remington 700 footprint. Uh, the Remington 700 is what you will see in a lot of the American hunting uh, rifles. Uh, just because it is used for hunting, one should not think that it's a bad uh, option. Uh, there are plenty of sniper sniper rifles and legendary sniper rifles which have been based on the seven, on the Remington 700 platform. Thereafter, we started evolving and we kind of came out with our own proprietary bolt action. So proprietary bolt action uh, is a lot different today than what we started off with. We have, uh, uh, this, this is our own design. A. Uh, it encompasses certain unique features in there. It's got a fluted bolt. It has a uh, a three lock bolt in there. You know, the close bolt is essentially a bolt moving inside a receiver, right? Uh, the tolerances in the case of a close bolt have to be very, very fine. Uh, to give you an example, the AK is a classic example of an open tolerance whip, right? But the sniper rifles, right? You need to have very fine tolerances when you manufacture these because your objective is to keep as much of the energy as possible going into propelling the bullet through the barrel. Right. So yeah. because you want to make sure that whatever energy release happens inside the system is directed at propelling the bullet, you need to be working on very fine tolerances as well. But when you work on very fine tolerances and tattoo with materials, which have to hold phenomenal amount of energy release, you need to be very, very fine with your uh, with, with what you use in there as alloys. Right. In our case, we had to do a lot of work beforehand. Uh, we had to, in fact, do some work between India and the U.S. in some cases because it was easier for us to get hold of ammunition in the U.S. 
uh, we did certain 3d printing uh, additive manufacturing operations to make sure that uh, we cut down on the timeline once we had the very first version uh, of our own proprietary bolt action rifle the next big headache that we had to face is that you have a system but where do you fire it right people who were very supportive at that uh, point in time and who said fine we we'll give you the ranges we'll open up the army ranges for you guys uh, we'll see how well we can support you and so that that's where the development cycle started so as far as snipers is concerned we would never have to go abroad that's the, that's our objective right if if snipers is one of our products and we should never have that uh, need to go outside of india uh, to find options for our forces whether that is law enforcement or military it's a completely modular system the sniper rifle in itself It's, it's 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 probably a big system but don't be confused about the fact that it looks big it can actually be uh, assembled and put back in a very modular fashion i'll tell you what it is that we've actually added and i'll give you a few stories into that so we were uh, at a, an expo uh, a show sometime in the year 2019 and this was happening in india of course and we looked at one of the foreign sniper rifles uh, and as usual my team decided to get a little uh, you know curious so we took out the bolt and we were trying to take off the bolt from the receiver and uh, the jawan on the other side said sab 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 kuch mat karo kuch mat karo so my guy said kya ho gaya bas wo sab kuch karoge na usko wapas videsh bhejna padega aur agar isko wapas bhejna padega wahan pe hamare bahut paise lag jayenge that was one instance where my team said enough is enough you've got to find a way in which our guys at field at field or for that matter base repair stations can take the sniper rifle do minor modifications right uh minor maintenance without actually having to send this all the way back to any place not even to bangalore where we have a setup so today we we kind of created a protocol whereby you can take off systems part and elements elements of it and the whole system is just a chassis right uh the barrel the receiver the bolt and the butt stock so there are just five parts of the zenta rifle right you can separate all of these in the course of five minutes you can put them back together as well you've got a small protocol three step protocol check it out clean it put it back in and you don't even need to come to any place you don't need to kind of go from uh, from from wherever you are to even bangalore majority of global sniper rifles are designed for a caucasian male uh, an average 6 foot uh individual with massive shoulders now i can vouch for something right you can walk into any special forces unit in india and, and you will see that our guys are, are are not guys with massive shoulders in fact they are not very well built in the upper body at all but they are very nimble they have strong lower bodies uh substantially good when it comes to endurance and so on um <coughs> their ratios of the length of their hands um certain things like you know the uh the uh, the size of your fingers and the way your arms are uh they very different from a caucasian male so we actually had to design some of the rifles for the indian form and the indian form itself is quite varying because you have the gorkhas who are like 5 foot 3 4 and you have the jards who are 6 foot plus and you have the punjabis who are somewhere in between a sniper is somebody who has the ability to also figure out the mathematics of 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 shooting uh, when he's shooting up to distances of 1000 meters and plus it's complex maths it's physics um and not everyone has the ability to kind of get there so what we realized as, as we went through is that we also created the knowledge bank to be able to possibly impart training to many of these snipers from a technology perspective considering the fact that we have a fairly large army in the next 10 years we should at least have a base of about a few thousand snipers and my dream is to have most of those guys uh, using triple s defense weapons and being trained by us and training us in return and with that we decided to compare weapons produced by triple s defense with weapons which are right now being imported by indian defense forces can you give me three advantages of saber over let's say a sniper rifle like scorpio tgt indian materials uh 
Indian research and development, which means that the ability to offer future upgrades is all ours. Uh, I can package the sale today with all future upgrades coming in in multiple variants that we will sell tomorrow. Second, maintenance has been taken into account as per Indian views. Uh, we now very well know how our soldiers use them, what environments they use them in, and the kind of maintenance which is required for that. Third, in terms of accuracy, reliability, we will find no difference whatsoever between us and theirs. That's right. That's really so, great. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm going on a wager and I'm saying that those guys have worked on for the last decades to perfect certain things. We did not have the advantage of many decades to perfect certain things. But what we did not have, we found in other ways of research and development. Right. And it is customized for Indian soldiers. And very, very customized for Indian mission criteria. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Uh, so. And, and, we do the, and we do the training in India as well. P72 Wrecker versus, let's say, AK203. Oh, we're far ahead. We're far ahead. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm less recoil, better ergonomics, substantially better engineering, a full length rail. The AK203 has a top rail, which is well, which is like riveted onto the dust cover. It's going to come loose in a few years of shooting. Um, where it is that we may not be as great as an AK is that the AK is an open tolerance weapon. We are closer to a fine tolerance weapon, which means that, uh, you know, certain things about the AK, which everybody loves, put them into water, put them into sand, put them into... Uh, yeah, into, mud into, testing and all that. Mud testing and all of that. We may not be as good as an AK, but uh, then my question is, if you want exactly what that AK does, then you might as well buy an AK, not buy an Indian weapon at all. Right? Yeah. We're going to be better and than accurate. For sure. costly. And it is oh, it's going to be costly. cheaper than the AK. It's going to be cheaper than the AK and it's Indian. So, yeah, kisi that's se that's puch ga, when a guy and a soldier of ours goes outside for an exercise and he says, that's my weapon, right? And you see the pride in that fellow's voice. You can hear that, right? It's very different from our soldier carrying an AK-203 or a SIG and uh, speaking with his sergeant colleague in the US Marines and saying, oh, this is your weapon. So you produce carbines, you produce snipers, um, scopes, ammunition, but why not pistols? Scopes, scopes is like something we're working on. I'm not so very confident about the value of what we can offer scopes today. I believe there are some wonderful scopes out there in the Western market. We love to use some of those scopes. Our job is to integrate many of those scopes well with our systems. And what about the pistols? Pistols? Uh, you mean the uh, the nine by nineteen kind of pistols? Yeah. Do you produce it? All, because I do not we, see we, it in the. We're not in the pistols game at this point in time. P seventy two Recon versus IWI X ninety five. Oh, very different systems. Completely different systems. Uh, the Recon is uh, a conventional one. Uh, it's a conventional weapon. The X ninety five, I think, is a bullpup. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it feels very different uh, when you take a bullpup versus a conventionally designed weapon. Uh, uh, it, it shoots different, so completely different weapons to compare in the first place. Um, as, far as, uh, as far as I can speak for our weapon, uh, one, the, the majority of what you will see on the P-72 Wrecker is... Um, uh, is, is, is a very light, custom designed, custom manufactured alloy. Uh, we don't use polymer uh, okay. of substantial nature besides for maybe the certain accessories like the buttstock, right? Uh, the second thing is that uh, the X95, if I'm not wrong, has, uh, has, uh, has a barrel which is currently coming in from IWY. Um, a large majority of the design of the X95 is actually Israeli, with only build to print happening in India. While the record is entirely designed in India, the IP is owned by us. And what we're trying to do at this point in time is basically come up with multiple variants of the, uh, of the record. Uh, one for the 7.6239 and one for 5.56. So 
in all fairness, it's difficult to compare two different weapons, but I can tell you that as far as construction of the weapon goes, the P-72, um, we're not sparing any efforts in, in, in putting in the best in there. The P-72 family includes a carbine, an assault rifle and a DMR, which have similar systems. This means that the soldier doesn't need to work on his muscle memory to train on each of them. Triple S Defence assures that it will provide the best technology and weapons for Indian soldiers. We are really thankful to Mr. Vivek Krishnan for sparing his time for us.